will tell us the challenges that we are facing in the digital era, particularly. Of course, our library is not a digitized library, and uh, very few libraries only digitized in the country that we know. But in this digital era, what are the challenges that uh, libraries are facing? And uh, our library, particularly, it is completely uh, specialized library for the literature. Other than literature, we don't keep. We have a 2.5 lakh book collection here in Delhi itself in 24 languages. So we have a similar small small libraries in uh, Calcutta, Bombay, and Bangalore. But they are very uh, about 25,000 each in the last year. Near about 13,500 to 14,000 membership, I think we have here. So every day, 100 to 150 readers they make use of our library services. And uh, at least two, three times, even Doordarshan has made a documentary on our library. So we are happy with our services. But still, so what are the challenges that we want to uh, know from another than the library now for? JNM, of course, JNM is India's prime uh, institution. So, before proceeding and before I request uh, uh, Professor uh, Manor Ramaji, let me welcome her with uh, our traditional uh, Kamcha and also So, moving ahead, uh, before talking about uh, shortcomings, 
let me uh, let me talk about what is the relevance of this uh, you know of this uh, Sahit Academy. What uh, what is the relevance of its uh, of this library for all of us, for all the stakeholders, for all the nation and. Uh, it's not limited to a particular group, rather, uh, and I think everyone will be on the same page, that literature plays, uh, you know, a very pivotal role, a very vital role in our lives. Because what is literature? Literature is, in fact, I would say, it's a reflection of what happens in our society. What do authors dwell upon? The, uh, the ideas don't, dwell, uh, don't come into their heads from skies. They write, they dwell upon, they elaborate upon the things which they experience in the society. So it's so very important and it, it should be taken, the, the due importance should be understood and it should be accorded. And uh, the thing is that all stakeholders have a responsibility. The onus lies on, the, on all the stakeholders to promote this library, it's not only for librarians, but all stakeholders have to get together. We don't have to work in silos that, you know, uh, some people are working differently, content creators are working, you know, in separate uh, chambers. But all have to get together in order to arrive at the consensus. So the basic, the crux is, it has tremendous importance, it has to be promoted. Second, as we all know, this national education policy, uh, the 2020, it envisages uh, an educational system which is based on values and which is capable of, uh, of converting the country into an equitable, into an exclusive, global knowledge superpower. Then these, uh, these, this NEP, it emphasizes on multilingualism, it refers to importance of language, it also alludes to, to, uh, to implementation of three language one. So why does it do? Because it is a high time we felt the importance of multilingualism, even a lot of research has shown that multilingualism has a lot of cognitive benefits. And then, uh, it, that is why it's important further, we should also know, uh, and we are aware that uh, uh, this uh, eighth uh, schedule of the uh, Constitution of India lists some 22 languages, and Sahit Academy includes uh, contents from these 20, uh, 22 languages. Besides, it also has collection and contents from, from other two languages uh, that are uh, Rajasthani and English. I think uh, I, I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I walk you through all the things which you already know, but since it's important, it should be, you know, before I talk about negative aspects, challenges, let me talk about the, you know, start on good things, promising. For example, what does it do? It, it preserves cultural heritage. How does it do that? Since it houses a diverse range of literary works representing different languages, regions and cultures of the country. By preserving these literary treasures, the library contributes to the promotion and preservation of India's rich cultural heritage. I know everybody agrees, but important things do need to be repeated and underlined. Then we know that India is a country, very commonly say that it's, it's all about unity in diversity. India is a land of diverse languages and cultures and the collection over here reflects that. The library collection showcases the literature of various linguistic groups, promoting an understanding of the nation's linguistic and cultural diversity. And this understanding, this harmony fosters unity and respect among different communities. And even research has shown that if the students from different linguistic groups, they are, they mingle with each other, they interact with each other, then harmony increases, harmony in the society enhances. It's not only that we are talking about literature, we are talking about language, but it is the science which underlines the same concept. 
Then libraries, multilingual collection exposes readers to literature from languages they might not, might not, they might not be familiar with. As I learned uh, with, uh, from librarian that uh, they are receiving 150 visitors daily. That's a good figure indeed. And another thing which I, you know, I noticed uh, when I went for a round with uh, Dr. Avinash, that as we enter the library on the left hand side is a beautiful attraction which is uh, going to be inaugurated shortly. And uh, when we talk of challenges, when, uh, when we talk of challenges, I think this is one of the very important things. That means if, uh, as a library, uh, as a library professionals, in order to enhance footfalls, we are supposed to create an ambience which is user-friendly. Which we are supposed to create an ambience which may attract people. So if we uh, want to attract young people, if we want to attract young researchers, then this, uh, uh, this corner, children's corner is very important. Because tomorrow, young researchers, that means young girls if they are coming, young women if they are coming, young ladies if they are coming with their children. The children will pick up the things that those children who visit the library today will be your future authors. So you are going to inculcate in, inculcate in them the basic, the importance of visiting library. So this corner, I think, is a wonderful uh, asset, I would say, of the whole, uh, you know, because our children are very fond of going to malls, but in case uh, in case this habit or it can be it can be inculcated, can be cultivated in them, that's very important. So challenge to challenge to address to enhance footfalls. I think to some extent this kind of corner children's corner can also address the concern of enhancing footfalls. Then next importance is fostering national identity. The collection includes works that highlight the struggles, achievements and values of different regions and communities across India. This fosters a sense of national identity and pride among citizens. As I visited the website and I found that there are collections across these 24 languages, then we have collections uh, on uh, uh, other subjects like philosophy, religion, women's studies. Then we have special collections on, uh, on uh, thoughts of Mahatma Gandhi, Tagore. Where we have a collection of collection includes the works of Tagore and Arvindo and so on and so forth. So we have a rich collection, but I think a lot of promotion is required from our side. Our children, our young children, our people should know that there, there is treasure trove in, at Sahit Academy that should be utilized optimally. The next point which is important is that such a collection inspires creativity and innovation. Literature often reflects the socio-political landscape and challenges of a nation. I think we are on the same boat, everybody will agree. By exploring the collection, individuals can gain insights into the country's history, social issues and aspirations, which can in turn inspire creative thinking and innovative solutions to contemporary problems. So uh, to put it in, you know, in simplest term, you know, this collection is important, it should be promoted, and why it should be promoted, as I said, it creates creativity, it inspires creativity and innovation among users, among children, whoever reads. And we should know that reading is very important. Nowadays, what is happening? A study came which, uh, which uh, you know, which highlighted that on an average, an Indian spends more than four hours on social media on such devices, which is not at all desirable. It, has, it is having more of detrimental effects than, uh, you know, than any positive effect. So uh, those children who are spending, who are investing so much of time uh, on social media, uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, they need to, their attention need, uh, needs to be diverted this side. They should be, they, they should be, uh, you know, they should be forced, they should be, uh, they should, you 
cannot force them, but they should, uh, uh, as an adult or as a parent or as a library professional, our onus lies on us to uh, to attract them to, into reading activity. Reading is very important. Why is it important? Because when we read, we understand, we assimilate, then we are in a position to synthesize and generate contents in our own. And when it happens, we in the process we become critical and analytical thinkers. At university level too, we emphasize on this because nowadays uh, what is happening that uh, it has been observed that in education and research, a lot of misconduct is happening. People are, researchers are resorting to shortcuts like cut and paste. They are resorting to, they are engaging in misconduct of plagiarism, falsification, fabrication. So why does it happen? It is happening with amazing frequency. As a result, UGC has come up with, uh, with different policies. And even penalty has been introduced for researchers who are, who are, uh, 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 who are you know, when it comes to the phone that they engage, they have engaged in some kind of misconduct. So why is it happening? Because uh, 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 in the initial, you know, when we were young, when, uh, during our childhood days, in moral science, uh, in our moral science classes during our childhood uh, uh, school days, we were told, always told, honesty is the best policy. But by the time we reach university level, all those things, you know, uh, disappear. So that is why reading is very important. And it's not only important for children or for uh, you know young people. It is important throughout, right from the your uh, school level to your uh, you know to your career to your advance, whether you become a professor or any practicing professional. Reading always remains important because it has tremendous importance. Then, educational resource. Library serves as an invaluable resource for students, researchers, and scholars. Access to a wide range of literary works can enhance academic pursuits, research, and critical thinking, ultimately contributing to nation's intellectual growth. Then, what is more important is it promotes literature has the power to evoke empathy and understanding for different perspectives. I think the people, uh, scientists are great, they are very good for the countries, but I think uh, literature and social sciences and humanities have a lot of importance and that is why IITs have integrated these subjects. Because even if you are a very good mathematician, you need to know sociology, you need to, be, you need to know history. That's right. So that is why we say that literature has the power to evoke empathy and understanding for different perspectives. By reading literature from various parts of the country, individuals can develop tolerance and broader viewership, one view, broader perspective. I think everybody would like to. Then our collection, as, uh, side, uh, this library's collection, it includes works from renowned as well as emerging writers, uh, writers and they have a site academy as the website mentions. It has instituted many awards for uh, and, and really award is given and then you have uh, you are, uh, uh, awards for uh, young authors, then uh, you have uh, awards for, uh, for writers, for Bal, uh -huh. So, uh, it, it has a lot of importance. Then, in uh, Sahit Academy initiatives to promote Indian literature internationally enhances the country's cultural diplomacy. It's there on the website that uh, many authors from China have been awarded to write there. I could read the citation, it's there on the so addressing uh, the collection also addresses social issues, many literary works tackle social issues uh, such as gender equality, caste discrimination, environmental concerns, etc. You see all these things are not in silos. 
uh, uh, for example, when I say literature, also handles things like uh, gender equality, caste discrimination, environmental concerns, etc. Then it's the other way around too. For example, uh, uh, I'm just doing a project on what uh, uh, what researchers have uh, recommended, what researchers have recommended to their thesis. In fact, uh, those recommendations can be can be formulated, can be used for formulating policies by government of India. So uh, it's an ICCR, uh, ICSSR project, and in which uh, I have selected uh, subjects like uh, women's studies, uh, special education. So uh, I have I have seen that. Students from Department of Literature, they have studied, they have, uh, uh, they have researched on the various aspects related to, related to women, related to discrimination against women, related to many other aspects of, uh, uh, of women. The crux over here is that uh, things are not in silos. People from social sciences, they are also working in, or uh, uh, trying to show various aspects, various dimensions which are associated with women and which are found in stories in novel and fiction. So in, in short, library collections of Sahit Academy uh, 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 play a vital role in shaping the narrative of India's cultural, social and intellectual landscape, ultimately contributing the, to the holistic development and mission building of the, the country. So this is the importance of the collection. So now coming to what is the problem, problem of the library. I think problems of the libraries uh, are same across uh, across the globe, uh, you know, across the globe. Whether it's Science Academy Library or uh, JU Library or DU uh, Library, problems are more or less same. So first problem I talk uh, what we face up and our face, uh, you know, JMU Library has a collection of more than five lakh uh, uh, volumes, and then we have a, uh, we have uh, access to some uh, thirty online databases, then we get access to twenty one online databases through e shorts group, and uh, we have a collection of more than thirty thousand. Uh, thesis and dissertations, and these thesis and dissertations are available on OCAP. That means full text is available to anyone in any nook and corner of the globe. Then, uh, out of these uh, uh, 30,000 pieces, we have more than 6,000 uh, PhD pieces available on Shodhanga as well. Uh, uh, again, they can be accessed from any part of the globe. Besides, we also have access to uh, we also have access to more than one lakh ebooks. They are available online, and we have a collection of more than one lakh uh, bound volumes which are available. We have subscription to more than uh, 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 more than hundred newspapers and uh, 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 press display, uh, which is a which is an online database. It provides access to more than three thousand newspapers and uh, in, uh, in various 60 languages of the world. So this was the, our collection. Then we have a special unit for, because library believes in providing equitable access to information to one and all. Uh, we have more than 100 uh, visually challenged students who are, uh, who are uh, registered in different programs of the university. So we have created a different. Uh, uh, we have created a different facility uh, uh, area. We have earmarked that area for those students, and we have uh, installed various uh, assistive technologies for them. Uh, for instance, we have we in, in that area is known as Helen Keller Unit, and we have installed 20 terminals over there, which are loaded with specialized software. Software like Kurzweil and JAWS, and these specialized software help students, uh, visually challenged students, in accessing online resources, OPAC, and, and system as well. Then, uh, since uh, students uh, come, and uh, everything is not available in, uh, in soft copy, everything is not available in digital format, and this is another challenge which libraries across the uh, country face, 
Uh, so we uh, digitized the print book for the uh, visually challenged students and thus we have created a repository for them, uh, for visually challenged students. Then a library also provides them laptops which are again uh, loaded with the specialized software. The laptops are issued to them. They are also issued digital voice recorders which they can take uh, with uh, them while attending uh, class lectures and can record them and can listen to them as per their convenience. Then we have another section where we have 144 terminals and it's for all the students to use online resources and uh, OPAP. Then we are uh, providing anti plagiarism because as we all are aware UGC regulations 2018, they have mandated the use of anti plagiarism software. That means uh, university should uh, scan the uh, pieces of uh, students before they submit uh, the pieces for evaluation and award of degree through these anti plagiarism software. So library provides them turn it in and open. Right now, uh, 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 right now, Kurkun is only available through the e-shows in group. Then library is very often conducting on a very regular basis workshops on the two credit, uh, two credit uh, course which UGC has introduced in 2019 for all research scholars, which is uh, known as public, uh, research and publication ethics. So uh, we are uh, very all, uh, we are providing we are organizing author programs how to write a paper all these things providing them how to use uh, different software for uh, for their research work these are some of the things which we do so now coming to challenges uh, the first challenge is the first duty of the library is to provide all resources. Uh, which cater to the information needs of the students, researchers, and faculty members. Here, where we, here we falter because uh, you know uh, we can say there is a digital divide because what students need, what researchers need, library uh, li library is not in a position to cater to every need of the users or researchers or faculty members because of the uh, budgetary uh, constraints. And every year we find that budget uh, is greatly. So this is one major challenge which library faces. And I think it's, uh, I have I've talked to other people too, and every year it's the same tale, the same saga. Oh, it's dwindling every year. Budget is becoming less and less every year. Yeah. So this is one problem. But we are hopeful that uh, government is in the process of implementing or will be implementing one nation on subscription. So we are hopeful that many of the problems or concerns will us of researchers will be addressed. So uh, this uh, this is one thing. Then second, uh, uh, we have observed that uh, information seeking behavior of the students, of researchers, of uh, uh, Professors, they are, uh, uh, this information seeking behavior is shifting. They want everything in online format. So, uh, uh, though the uh, importance of libraries as physical places is tremendous, which people refuse to understand these days, because when one enters the library, one finds new arrivals. One, one may not be interested. May, one may not be interested in reading those books. But even the titles are providing an information, providing information to the users. When you do perambulate among the shelves, even then, uh, when you perambulate among the shelves, when you move between the racks, then you come across many books about which you did not know before coming to the library. And another important thing which I personally feel, I don't know who, uh, if others feel too, that uh, I think the very ambience is inspired. So I think it's very inspiring. For example, that is why I feel that gym is very important and I ensure that I go to gym daily. But uh, because uh, everybody tells me but you see, I emphasize no, ambience is important. When you see others reading, then If you, you know, when uh, there is a section, though, uh, 
earlier we used to have, earlier we used to, uh, I'm talking about my library, we used to subscribe to some thousand print journals. Now because uh, faculty members, everybody wants everything in, in, so, in print, in online uh, uh, format. Further and uh, besides that, the budget problem, so uh, because of uh, these two major problems, we have dropped many print subscriptions. But I personally feel when, you know, when where the physical collection is also very important in, especially I'm talking about the journal section, where we display, you know, journal section, we display the current issues of the journals. In if, even if you don't want to read them, but if you see the POC page itself, you will gain a lot of things. And it is very enriching experience if you see. Because even titles are one line abstract and you are able to make out what is the latest trend. So that is why importance of physical libraries, but anyway, since this, uh, uh, the, the, you know, pandemic has made a lot of difference on the things and, our, and, our, and on how we operate. In each and every sphere of life, it has been impacted. So for almost two years, physical library facilities were under suspension. But then, uh, what happened? Even the, we evolved. When we say we evolved with, you know, with, with, with challenges. So library was providing uh, access-based services. We had uh, we have access to a lot of uh, online resources, ebooks. That so those were uh, being provided, and I think that. Uh, that was done across the globe that way. And then uh, what is important in this that uh, libraries need to provide uh, one window search which is very helpful. That means if uh, research scholars must have observed if you have a single window search that means you, uh, you keep your search uh, um, uh, in the single window and then in response to your uh, query Search will be conducted across different resources. That means you won't have to go to each and every database differently, but through single window search, you will conduct search and results will be displayed. So these are some of the facilities which uh, libraries extended. Uh, uh, I'm talking about my library as well as other libraries did too during uh, during pandemic. So one challenge is providing whatever users need and then another thing is uh, which I want to say that uh, since uh, there is change in the information seeking behavior of users and the uh, users want uh, everything in online format and then even as professionals we do feel at times that if we have uh, everything in uh, e or e form then we can save on precious space. Because everywhere it's the same story that the university is growing in terms of programs, in terms of students, in terms of faculty members, in terms of researchers, but library is not growing. Space crunch is another major challenge. So even we want to have everything in online format, but then what is happening? The, the challenge is do we, uh, uh, do we have everything in online which we need? Some five years ago, we conducted a study uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to find out if the, uh, uh, the books required by our faculty members across different schools, across different streams, were available in, on, or in online as well. Then we found out that whatever was recommended, only 57% was available in online. So the message over there is whatever we need, even if we want to have it online, we cannot have it. Plus, especially it happens in languages because uh, we have uh, at JNU we have uh, we have uh, 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 we have courses, we have programs which are offered in different Hindi languages as well as in Spanish, French, uh, Portuguese, Italian, and other languages like Urdu, Pashto, the, uh, but everything which is required by researchers in other languages like Urdu, Pashto, or and many Indian languages, they are not available in online form. In online format. So this is another challenge which we face. Then we also.
also feel, feel that uh, uh, some of the collections, you know, if a library has a, say, collection of five lakhs or something, and it, I think it happens every year, that active collection is not the whole collection. Active means the collection which is very, of, is very much in circulation, the, the collection which is very much in use. So in order to promote the use of that collection, we often hold uh, exhibitions, we often uh, display, put them on display uh, uh, by naming hidden treasures of the library. We see if the books have not been issued even once we put them. For example, if we keep a book in Hindi, 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 we We decide uh, different uh, themes and accordingly we put display, we put them on display just to uh, increase and uh, enhance, in, uh, just to uh, enhance the visibility to the book. So maybe students, and sometimes students do feel, Acha, they, uh, they, we put a register there and comments, Acha, ye library ne tha, me pata hi tha. So ye pata hi tha, why does it happen? When we know ignorance, and I think it's the same story everywhere. Uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, collections, most of the services which library extends to users, users often remain unaware of them. So this promotion, this communication, merely providing OGAP is not enough because OGAP is everywhere. Still students say, we even teachers who have been using the library, they say the same thing. So promotion, repeated promotion, repeated promotion, and as they say, uh, it's uh, in Rome do as Romans do. So I would say, if students are very fond of not spending more than four hours on uh, social media, then we should make you, uh, we should also make use of social media in order to engage their attention in order to communicate to them that we have so much of treasure from, please do use them. So exhibitions, displays, constant reminders, and I think website, uh, website does play an important role. The website should be very interactive in nature. It should be communicating each and in, uh, every information to the users in order to engage them, in order to intrigue them And then we also are, uh, I have five minutes. It has also been seen that, uh, for example, uh, we also have language collections. But then uh, another challenge is to, uh, you know, to have updated, to have skill sets. That means our, use, our human resources should have adequate skill sets. For example, we have language collections across, across different. Uh, uh, different languages, but then we have problem that we don't have staff who is proficient in all the languages. So this is another problem uh, which we face, but then we try to address them because we have a UGC policy, on while you learn, we engage students uh, through them, uh, through under that uh, uh, scheme, but then uh, in JNU most of the PA and MA students get scholarship. So the rule says if they are getting scholarship or some uh, remuneration or some fellowship from government, they can't be engaged. So such uh, problems often come, then at times we take the help of uh, young assistant professors too to get the, because uh, uh, we are not language experts, we do take help. Uh, so such things do come up. Then there is another problem, uh, some, uh, with the time, you know, the, the correction also, with, uh, due to constant use, it gets worn out. Books need to be, uh, uh, to be replaced with new ones. Then the problem comes, that can we digitize? If the books are worn out, can we digitize and keep them in, in a soft copy? And make, uh, because if uh, the books are digitized, which are not available in, uh, in, in, in e-form, then if they are digitized, then uh, uh, what will happen? We will preserve them, it will be used, the contents can be used for, uh, for wider dissemination, the contents will have more visibility. Then again it comes then how will you digitize them for even digitization, 
we have to take, uh, take uh, uh, we have to keep in mind the uh, the copyright act to then we do need budget too for digitizing and everything. Though the Indian Copyright uh, amended, uh, Amendment uh, 2012, it permits that uh, like we can keep uh, three copies of a uh, can keep three photocopies of a particular book, and if the library uh, is providing access to visually challenged students, then the book which is very much within copyright can be digitized as well. So these are some of the things we uh, help, which help us in extending services to the users. Then I'll say collaboration is very, for example, if I have to, uh, you know, if we, uh, I'm asked how to promote the use, uh, use of this library, then, uh, and I think it's not something new, it is, uh, it is there in national, uh, in NEP too. For example, there should be collaboration. If we want the collection of this library should be used, because uh, there are language programs in J, in DU, so uh, if, uh, if there are novels in a particular language and students uh, they are in, in, in pursuing some other language, so if collaboration is there and that uh, this, uh, this uh, the novel is being uh, is being taught in a particular course, then it can be translated. For example, if Pension is there and then uh, some student is uh, pursuing a course in say uh, say Korea or in some Pasto or in Russian, then. They have to, uh, it's in their, in their course that they have to translate a novel. So this way usage can be uh, increased by collaboration. Plus we can engage right uh, uh, from the, and this is also there in NEP. If we engage the students, uh, since it's a, uh, it also uh, spells out three language formula, if we engage the students right from the beginning, and, and I think some of the libraries, some of the school libraries, I personally know, they do implement these things. That during the, they do offer book discussions, story reading hours are being held in some libraries. And uh, uh, these storytelling hours and these book discussion, book clubs, they do make a tremendous difference. I personally think that. And if students are asked to, uh, you know, uh, in, during summer vacations, like we have so many camps, we can have, uh, we can, libraries can organize reading camps and some certificates may be, uh, may be given to students, maybe who, who write uh, book reviews, uh, who write reviews for three to four books and so on, to engage them. And it would not be an engagement just for the sake of engagement, but it would be a very, a very crucial, very important, very significant engagement because I again repeat that reading does make a difference. When we read, we assimilate, we understand, then we become critical thinkers. We are able to take, a, uh, we are able to engage in informed decision making. So these are some of the things which strike to me, though there are many more. But now I would request you to, to share your feedback so that to, uh, to share your problems which you encounter in your library. Ah, yes, uh, from my side it's over, though there are many other things. But, but, uh, Thank you, Mona Raghuji. You have given the wide right range of um, ideas, I should say, that, and you have compared uh, a lot of other things also, physical books and digital books. They have given a kind of uh, overview of the role of Sahitya Academy Library. Because the uh, is very specialized in library, as I said in the beginning also, it is a only literary books collection. And uh, uh, this, so we have a entered library room system also. We have a that type we have. So in future, any university library also, if they want some kind of books to be Interloan between our library and that we always can explore the possibility. And as far as uh, I mentioned about our activities concerned, just to a little bit, I can 
explore those things. So, Academy has a four uh, types of awards we give. One is Science Academy Award, everybody knows about it. And also we have an award for the young writers, that we call it as a Yuvo Puraskar, below the age of 35 years. And uh, we have a translation award, because India without translation we can't move. As, uh, Kumashankar Joshi Ji was the Nyanjit Awardi and the Vice Chancellor of Vishwabharti, also President of Sahit Academy. Once he said, every Indian is a bilingual, if not a trilingual. So, without translation, we can't do it. Every Indian, at least a Rikshawala also knows at least two languages. It's not a surprise thing for every Indian. So, that is why we give translation award also. And the fourth one is, as you mentioned, the children award, the writers who write for the children. So these are the four different kind of awards we give and all we work in 24 languages. Every year we give these 24 languages awards in four different categories. And in addition to that, we also do four Bhasha Samans for the unrecognized languages. There are several uh, languages which are not in the eight schedule, not by recognized the site academy. Uh, like many, even Kojpur is such a major language, it's not in the eight schedule but so far. Rajasthan, of course, we have recognized, but it is not in the ancient world. In Indian English, we give without recognition, but it is not in the ancient world. So there are several uh, dialects, and that is the academic debate again. But which is the language is the dialect? Only on the Hindi, we do both things. We do not have Bhasha. We still have academic debate. We have to go and conclude that we have to do this. We have to say, if you go to North East, it is so many languages. So there are few kilometers language gets changed in uh, Northeast. So many languages like uh, language called Missing, Bokor, uh, it's a state language of uh, Tripura, Khasi, it's the state language of uh, Meghalaya. Like so many languages, we give four Bhasha Samans every year. Uh, because we can't do all together. So it's a cycle system. Even we have given twice to Kojpuri also. It's a language called Go. You go to South Point, you have a Kodava language, this is a Toda language, this is uh, spoken in the Nirgiri Hills areas, this is a Tini language, which is being spoken in uh, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat and some other parts. Panjara, it's being spread over in Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, and in uh, Rajasthan, of course. So that is one activity. These are the award effect. And also, we are then we are about to 600 plus programs every year. So every day, one or two programs are being organized from some parts of this country anyway. But also we publish near about 500 books every year we publish. Some are reprints and some are business. So these are our activities in that shell. We just spoke about the, uh, this uh, foreign fellowship to China. That is what uh, we give honorary fellowship to foreigners, those who promote our Indian languages abroad. For example, Kishian uh, Singh, there is a very famous uh, 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 scholar in China. Jin Han Tim, the Homil Jalabi. So, the Professor uh, Ari Asher has done a tremendous work for Tamil promotion. So, such scholars, those who are foreigners, but promoting Indian literature abroad. So, we give honorary fellowships to them. That is the highest uh, honor of the Sahit Academy. And uh, also we have uh, two other fellowships, uh, the Malik Premchal Fellowship and Anand Kumar Swami Fellowship. That is also again we give it to South and South Asian country writers and scholars. They can come to India and they can stay back in India for about to 15 days and uh, they can do some kind of research work. We will look after all their uh, uh, expenses and all that is a two or two other things. So coming to again your today's uh, theme. Uh, uh, what is the necessity of uh, digitization? That is a very uh, because the uh, future is digitization only. But at the same time, we Indians always feel that physical book is always. Uh, there is a different kind of. So Madam Mother also mentioned that. There is a poem, uh, there is, uh, I think Guljal uh, also written about book. It's wonderful. So the physical books, so, so far India is concerned. That place is still, that is why our book fairs are happening and uh, we get a tremendous response. We can sell our books very well. You see our Sahitya Academy books as a cheap uh, price wise. 
but still last year we sold about 18 crores worth of books. So that means there is a kind of demand. We have our specialization in only literature. In spite of that, we sold like that. So that physical books that uh, place is still there. But if you look at the future, digitization is required. And even uh, the youth, yes. they also like what everybody wants to read in the internet and all that. So that is a big challenge. Uh, when Madam towards end she mentioned that copyright issue is also there at the time of digitization. And after digitization, when you give it to your user, so what will happen to physical book sales? So these are the uh, some issues are there for us to, because uh, we are not uh, completely competent enough to uh, do that kind of. But still, government of India has done some uh, some digitized libraries, national digitized libraries that we want to. But mostly there the textbooks and knowledge text, some that kind of books are available. Uh, so uh, the big challenge is before us. So what will be the future of these physical libraries? That is still unanswered question. Uh, so thank you. You covered many areas. So I think now we will be open for a, a kind of a five to ten minutes uh, question answer session. Do you have any uh, particular question or anything you want from Dr. Maharaji? Kindly. Now it is open. The platform is open. Everybody is afraid of asking you anything. Huh? Yeah, please. Uh, 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 
uh, for example, if we are organizing something, maybe if you want to start with, you can start with a virtual uh, thing, then you can uh, switch over to physical and then uh, keep something uh, which engages students as well. I think multiple factors have to be kept into consideration. We can't say this will, uh, this is the perfect solution which will address all the concerns. Maybe if it suits me, my library may not suit your library. But uh, multiple factors have to be taken into account. to pull the people. Hi, uh, my name is Mohammad Zaki. I'm uh, from MDMC Committee and just my colleague Sheikh Fatih, we both from MDMC Committee. Uh, around books and around libraries, uh, across the globe, we as a community are around about 200 plus patients currently. So uh, our primary uh, you know, motives around reaching out, especially the young, young side of uh, you know, the world, is through literature and through uh, books. But uh, as, as you, know, you mentioned in your talk, there is a great revolution that is pushing our people towards the digital area, right? And uh, we also do have our physical libraries, but uh, the amount of books that we have physically available, we've also tried to push everything online, trying to make e-books available, trying to make PDFs available. While that is there, there is, while we're still struggling across libraries, and as both you also mentioned, we're still struggling to completely push to the digital area, I believe there is another uh, challenge that we foresee very soon is the intervention of AI in the, in, in the world of libraries, right? Because, and, and this has actually taken, taken a major jump post-COVID because we have kind of got into a scheme of wanting to say everything glossy comes to home, everything comes to home, right? We, we want to have everything digitally available with us. So is there a possibility or is there a way that, you know, uh, we can as libraries uh, and, and uh, we do have a books in uh, National Library in Kolkata and all of that as well. But is there a possibility that libraries can explore the you know possibility of getting uh, books you know delivered to their premium readers for a time? Zomato kind of thing? Yeah, kind of Zomato thing. Just just trying to fit into the current culture and also. Why digital era and getting ebooks into the picture is one challenge, but uh, I, you know, uh, assume and I kind of believe AI is also a part of you know the digital side that we as as the literature world should actually look into. Uh, so possibility that libraries and especially you know big libraries like Jane Library or we can we can you know talk about uh, the national libraries if they can push into this era of getting books delivered you know online pushing the request to get a book for say 10 days and way to get it delivered to this will actually bring the hard copy into hands of people again. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. I think this is an important concern which uh, you have raised and but I think we are doing some of the flavors of what you said we are already implementing. For uh, for example, interlibrary loan, it is also a kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, this thing we are already doing that, but I personally feel that you know, physically visiting the library, uh, that means uh, if uh, if the need arises, we can do that. But when I talk of ambience, when you inspire, uh, the the ambience does make a difference. When you enter the library, you make use of the things, you make use of the ambience, you interact with other people. Because what we are doing, we are implementing information commons in our library. So that means we are providing an area where students, are, we are providing them with computing infrastructure, we are providing them with, uh, 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 with, with human resources where they can come, they can deliberate, they can, uh, uh, they can brainstorm on any topic or anything in which they want to. So I think right now we are making, we are trying to have the best of both the worlds. Well, both the worlds, that means what you are suggesting, we are also uh, doing it in, in a very, you can say, rudimentary kind of, or, uh, and we are uh, using the traditional uh, way to. And I personally think, though AI has made a, uh, making a substantial uh, uh, impact, but I think this physical library will also remain. So in future too, we will have hybrid mode. 
not completely uh, online or completely traditional because we ourselves conducted a study where we found that only 57% of uh, what we needed was available. That's an important concern, that's a uh, crucial uh, concern which you have raised, but I personally think we will have a hybrid mode. To supplement his uh, point, no, what I want to say, because the, uh, one thing is that uh, this is the uh, uh, door delivery uh, kind of thing. Do, yes. uh, do you think is it uh, practically possible a city like Delhi or Calcutta or India in Bora? Practically, I like, guess it is possible. Alternately, because see, the library services, then if you take uh, JNU or the site of the library, there are very nominal rates to be charged for a year, only 1000 or 4000 rupees membership, a book delivery. Means again, a courier will, will be in picture. And after that, whether that uh, library subscriber, how he will return the book. Again, he has to come back physically, or even in the Amazon, uh, uh, when we are supplying our books, we are facing a lot of problems with many you know, of our Indian great minds, you know, of course, particularly youth. I will go one example. The history of Indian English literature by M.K. Nair. It is a textbook in many universities. So every year we sell about some 5,000 plus copies. So once we put, because in the Amazon sale, uh, our books are there. So what they do, they order, they take the book. So there are some kind of charges that courier wala will take to the Amazon courier and do whatever the cost, and then they will take their commission. And after taking the book, uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, the, uh, tie up for agreement with uh, terms and conditions of the Amazon. Within 9 days or 10 days, one can return the product. So they are treating this book as a consumer product. So after 8 days, I don't want this book. So uh, government is in loss, but both the, uh, the delivery and uh, uh, both the delivery charges. So the book cost is 50 rupees, the delivery charges both sides is 150 rupees. And some people they take, they take Jaros copy of a particular chapter and they will be assigned back home. So they, we have a great minds in India. But so practically also we have to see whether library books can be delivered at a doorstep and really is it practical. But at the same time, uh, from case to case basis and a genuinity, kind of there is some senior writer, if he want, if he's writing some article and he has to give some speech at some place. He needs certain books. So we always send the books at their uh, courses. But guess what? But uh, uh, 13,000 to 500 or 14,000 subscribers we have. If we open that, uh, so uh, I don't think uh, we, we need at least 1,000 staff. <laughs> yeah, uh, equal amount of them. So, but case to case basis, we do that kind of services. Uh, inter uh, library, uh, sometimes we take books from the ISC yes. and other libraries wherever because we are a member of Telnet and other things. So, from that, we find out that particular book is not available in the site at the library. We find out where it is available. We request them. In similar way, they also request the inter library learning system is there. So, that is working very well. So, it's a wonderful evening. Uh, as Madam mm -hmm. mentioned, that very soon we are going to open a children's corner. So that was the idea what you have told us. So parents will start coming, taking their children. Because nowhere, children's library is not there. Uh, as well. Because the private colonies, there are certain libraries in a small scale. But to the governmental level, there is not. Other than school, college libraries, there is no children's libraries. So our experiment cases we are starting. And also, once we succeed that, within our library, we want to open a poetry corner. A kind of exclusively poetry corner that also will be open, and uh, very soon, maybe in the beginning of 24, we are going to open a uh, extension of our library in Dwarka because uh, the subscribers, those who are like all the way, they have to come to Monday house to pick up their book and delivery. So, to reduce their uh, this, so we are working that also. So, with this, uh, I thank each. Each and every one of you for making this. Uh, after four or five years, uh, we had this uh, kind of uh, uh, interactive session with regard to our library. So we will have a more and more this kind of uh, uh, program, particularly related to the library. Of course, the Ministry of Culture recently they had a big uh, festival of libraries. So much of all, uh, might have attended also.
So soon we will come back with uh, some new ideas. We are also most welcome to give some kind of suggestions to us. So what are the best services we can give it to you people? And what kind of programs we should organize with regard to library services? And as I mentioned again, I will underline and bold it. Our library is specialized only literature, no other uh, uh, disciplines we deal with. So in that uh, domain, whatever you suggest, we are always uh, happily welcome the ideas. So with this, once again, I thank uh, all of you for taking this evening.